I am so excited about my dinner tonight. Do you want to see what I'm having? This right here is a vitamin D supplement. But you say to me, Joe, that's not enough. Where's the chicken? Where's the rice? Where are the vegetables? No, I'm okay. I'm only eating my supplement today. I know what you're thinking now. Joe, that is absolutely crazy. And you'd be right, it is. But may I say this? I think many Christians on the internet live their lives like this. They're quite content just getting a supplement here, a supplement there, a YouTube video here from a different Christian. And yet, they could be week in, week out, be eating full, square, balanced meals at a local church. You could be having fellowship with local believers. You could be having a pastor to shepherd your soul who can look you in the eye, straight eye to eye contact, knowing who you are and guide you and your family through the word of God week by week. Listen guys, let me be totally transparent with you. I'd be lying to you right now if I didn't tell you there's a part of my sinful flesh which loves just watching the numbers rise. You know, at the moment we're on 168,000 subscribers and I think that is crazy that there's 168,000 people in the world that are watching my videos and there's a part of me that loves that but I know that the Lord has laid this on my heart for a long long time that I need to warn you this isn't about Joe Kirby this isn't about any other Christian youtuber this is about your soul and worshiping the Holy God and God has laid out a particular method of how we are to grow as Christians and that's through the local church so you can take or leave my Christian videos if you never watch one of my Christian videos videos again you will be totally fine but what you cannot live without is going to a church where a pastor shepherds your soul and leads you through the Bible and you meet with other believers who aren't perfect but you meet with those Christians who encourage one another in the faith so that's false teaching number one I've met Christians in my life who say church it's not really that important anymore you don't who, who needs to go to church anymore well just listen to uh, Hebrews 10 verse 24 it says and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together now I do want to make something abundantly clear church attendance does not save you. It is only the blood of Jesus Christ that can save you. He alone can scrub away our sins and make us presentable to the Lord God. But the truth is this, the devil loves to isolate Christians. Have you ever sat next to a coal fire? Have you seen it when all those coals are bunched together, how much they burn, how much they're set on fire? But you know what's very interesting? If you pull out one of those coals from the fire, almost immediately the flame will go out and it'll go cold. But as soon as you put it back in, again, it'll burn. And that's what it's like for the Christian. If you come away from church fellowship, if you come away from being encouraged with, with Christians face to face, you will go out and the fire will start to dim. But I can hear exactly what you're thinking now. Isn't church just full of hypocrites and fakes? You're right, it is. It's full of hypocrites and fakes. And you might say, well, I don't want to be around people who are, who are horrible, who are nasty. Well, that's a bit like being very, very sick, but saying, I don't want to go to a hospital because there's too many sick people there. You see, the truth is this, we're all dirty, we've all got skeletons in our closets, we're all fake, we're all hypocrites, we all live double lives at times. But the good news is that the church should be a place where sinners can go and we're all bound together by one love, that Jesus died for us and that we're not saved by our works, we're saved by his finished work on the cross. Now please don't misunderstand me. I don't want to diminish from the fact that there are actually very, very bad churches. Churches which teach heretical things. There are churches which do this thing that we now call spiritual abuse. They bully people, they abuse people. And then again, there might be people watching now. I remember a lady once wrote to me in 2017 when I first started the channel. She said, there's no way of me getting to a church. I'm heavily disabled and the nearest church to me is 50 miles away and I'm lonely. So we can't just make sweeping statements and apply them to everyone. Everyone. But would it be possible for you, maybe just you and your friends, or maybe just you and your family, to meet together and read the Word of God? The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst of them. So why not? It doesn't matter about numbers. Why not set up your own church? But I suppose what I'm really trying to preach against is this microwave Christianity where you get Christians who go from church to church to church and they just never feel satisfied. And that's why they love YouTube because if they don't get on with someone on YouTube, they just click the unsubscribe button and they go to the next channel and it's all very cheap and easy. But if you think the church 
your local area is bad, why don't you go through the New Testament? In the New Testament you had people who were getting drunk off the communion wine. You had people who were sleeping with other family members right in the midst of the church. And yet these body of believers, that they stuck together. Why? Because they didn't have all the choices that we have today. They said, no, this is God's bride. It's messy, it's bad, but we're going to fight for it. False teaching number two, the prosperity gospel. That's where people believe that God wants you rich, he wants you famous, he wants you successful, he wants you healthy, wealthy, and if you pray for these things, God will speak them into your life, just like the law of attraction. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 5 says this, there are some who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, did you know this? Right now, as we speak, this very second, there are thousands of Nigerians who are being mowed down. There is a modern day holocaust which is happening to Christians in Nigeria. Right now, as we speak, on Sunday, this coming Sunday, there will be Christians in China who, I've seen pictures of this, the government put chairs, they put tables outside their doors so that the Christians can't leave their house to go to church the next day. They barricade them in their houses on Sunday and then when Monday comes they remove the chairs. Right now as we speak this very moment there are starving Christians in Ethiopia. In Armenia there are Christians who can't buy shoes. They're so poor that they have to walk around with glass cutting their feet. The truth is this, God loves all of his people and you might be watching this right now on a beautiful Mac, you might be sitting there on a leather sofa, but right now around the world there are Christians who will never ever get the opportunity to watch a YouTube video because they're so poor, they're so broken. Does God love you more than he loves them? Absolutely not. Christianity is not about being rich. Christianity is not about having money and being famous and successful. Christianity is about our relationship with the risen Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus once said this, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God. Now many people think it's talking about a needle and this massive big camel fitting through a tiny needle, but that's not what the verse means. Actually, the eye of the needle was a tiny little gap, a tiny little gate in the wall of Jerusalem. And the camels would walk up to this little gate and it wouldn't be able to fit through because it had all of these bags, it had all of these possessions on it. So instead, uh, the owner had to take the possessions off the camel and then it could fit through that gap. And so it is with you and I. We need to let go of our possessions. We need to let go and not hold on too much to our things, but give them away for the kingdom of God. False teaching number three, the seeker sensitive movement. This is where churches say, we need to do whatever we can to get non-believers in. So they act like the world, they put on a big party and they do actually fill the churches with many, many people. But what does 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 say? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Here's a question for you. Do you know who Mr. P.T. Barnum is? P.T. Barnum is the inspiration behind the film The Greatest Showman, which Hugh Jackman played and it was a big storming success. But did you know this? That P.T. Barnum once got in touch with one of the greatest preachers who ever lived, Mr. Charles Spurgeon. And he said to Mr. Spurgeon, he wrote to him, please would you come and preach at one of my circuses. The audience will pay to get in, we'll pay you a thousand pounds, and also Mr. Spurgeon will have 10,000 people come in to listen to you preach the word of God. Now many preachers today would think that is a fantastic opportunity. A thousand pounds, 10,000 people to preach the word of God, people might get saved. But here's how Mr. Spurgeon responded. Dear Mr. P.T. Barnum, Thank you so much for inviting me to speak at one of your circuses. You will find my response in Acts 13 verse 10. Here's what Acts 13 verse 10 says. O oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord. You see, Spurgeon knew that the gospel should be free and he wasn't going to change his ways, he wasn't going to have a circus to try and entertain people. He knew that what the people needed is the plain word of God. But the sad reality is, friends, we're not being invited to go and preach at circuses. We're saying let the church itself be a circus and we'll invite everyone in. Another preacher put it like this. He said, it's your birthday in a month. We're going to throw a party for you. How about you invite the whole school you invite all of your friends to come to our house and we're just going to sing happy birthday to you and have a cake. How many of your friends do you think will come to that party? 
And the little girl said, well, probably no one died, like two or three people. Okay, well what about if we do this? What if we hire Disney World and the whole school is invited and we can have fireworks, we can have displays, we can have music, concert, and then we invite the whole school. How many do you think will come? And the daughter said, yeah, everyone will come. And then the preacher said this, but what would happen if in the middle of Disney World, I put my arm round you and I say, look, at all of your friends who have come here to celebrate your birthday, would they really be here to celebrate your birthday? And that's really what I'm trying to say. Is it all about the entertainment? Is it all about the gimmicks? Or is it about the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, please don't misunderstand me. I do believe we've got to engage this culture. And don't ever think that, a, that an organ is more holy than a guitar because that would be legalism on steroids. No, we need to be trying to reach people and not put stumbling blocks in front of them, but at the same time keep the main thing the main thing, and that's lifting up the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and not compromising on the Word of God. The preacher and doctor Martin Lloyd-Jones once said this, My experience as a physician has been this, never to ask the patients what medicine they would like to take. And so it is with you and I. Don't go to the world and say what would entertain you. No, give them the word of God. That's what they need. Number four, sinless perfection. This is the false teaching where people say, if you commit a sin, you're certainly not saved. But the scripture says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Verse 10, it says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him, that's God, a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, very sadly, this doctrine has sprang back up. And people would say, oh, I don't believe sinless perfection. No, we do sin. But if you commit this sin, oh, you're going to hell. If you do that sin, you're going to hell. And they rank different sins and they start to play God and they become very pharisaical. You see, within our flesh, there's a real attraction to us to sort of try and earn our way into heaven, to sort of contribute to our salvation. But the fact is this, it's called the second birth for a reason. You know, you and I, we never contributed to our first birth. Is there anyone watching this now who had any contribution to their birth? You did nothing. And so it is with our second birthday. We did nothing to become born again. It was all of God. It was all of his goodness and his salvation plan. And I believe one of the greatest tragedies in all of this is that it's often young people who get sucked into this. Just like young people we see in extremist religions, they get radicalized and they get shaped into this, do these rules and regulations, do this, and you will gain your way to heaven. So I think the devil sweeps this into Christianity too. I'll be honest, looking at you right now, I, I got into this at one time. I remember going out on the streets, whipping people, standing in pulpits, and preaching very, very harsh messages because I'd I'd heard preachers on the internet preach like this, but it took me a long time to realize that actually it's the grace of God that sets people free. You know, you'll draw out a lot more bees with honey than you will with vinegar. And my dear friends, remember this, Jesus treat those who are weak in their faith, those who are sinful, like a bruised reed. He would never break them. But who was he very strong with? Who did he come down like a ton of bricks on? The Pharisees, you whitewashed tombs. You look great on the outside, but within you is death. And guys, come on now, we've all met the guy who really did preach the loudest, who condemned the most people, and then suddenly God pulls out what was going on in the dark, what was going on behind closed doors, and we found out that person was a religious hypocrite. So my dear friends, remember, grace always wins the day. And on the flip side, however, number five, is what we call cheap grace or easy believism. This is the idea where people say, I prayed one prayer, I prayed the sinner's prayer, and now I can do whatever I like. I don't need to listen to God, I don't need to obey him. Essentially what they're doing is they're kicking sand in the face of God. They're spitting in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 55 verse 7 says this, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Now I want to make something very clear here. Heaven is not a reward, it is a gift. So there is nothing you can do to earn your way into heaven. But when you become a Christian, God's Spirit comes and lives within you, and suddenly you get new desires, a new heart for holiness, for the things of God, and he grants you that heart of repentance. So my question to you is, are you quite content kicking sand in the face of God? After he saved you, do you have no respect for him? Do you have no fear in your heart towards this holy God who dwells in an approachable light? Is anyone watching this right now confused? Well, let me try and illustrate it 
to you. I don't know if you've ever seen a gymnast walk in a tightrope. On one end, I want you to imagine is the pole of judgment, repentance. And on the other end, I want you to imagine is the pole of grace, of mercy. If those two are held tightly, close, side by side, in balance, then the tightrope walker will be able to walk across that tightrope very happily. You see, if either of these poles go tighter or slacken, suddenly the tightrope walker will fall off. And so it is with you and I. We need to keep that tension always there, looking at the Lord God, saying that, you know, heaven is a gift, not a reward. There's nothing we can do to earn our way into heaven. But at the same time, we must respect and love this holy God. We must act like we are children of the light and not children of the darkness. Not so that we can save ourselves, but out of gratitude, out of love to everything that the Lord Jesus Christ has done. So above all, remember this. God is a tender God, a God of mercy, a God of love, but he also commands all men everywhere to repent. So if you're living in habitual sin, God is calling you this very day to turn from your sin, to repent, to leave it behind. Why? Because Jesus Christ only deserves the best. So, over to you now. I want to hear, what do you think are the five most toxic teachings which are being taught in the church? Leave it in the comment box below. If you'd like to see a video where I talk about false teachers and how we as Christians should react to them, click here. And if you haven't yet subscribed, uh, please do so. We'd love to have you part of this ministry. God bless you all. Thank you for watching.